Guys, what's up? How are you? You guys excited for summer? Anybody? Anybody excited for graduation? <laughs> yes, move on to the next thing. I know, the juniors are like, oh, I wish. But guys, we're coming up to it. This is our last night of normal youth. And as we kick off our sermon tonight, I've got a question for you. Have you ever been injured so badly that it changes how you have to live your life? Anybody? You have. I have. Guys, I don't know about you, but my injury was actually one of the best things that could have possibly happened to me. See, when I was a freshman in college, I just started following Jesus, and I was on fire for him. I wanted to know everything about him, and I wanted everyone around me to know all the things that I knew about him, which, you know, it's a double-edged sword because God did use me for some pretty cool things, but what it led me to believe was that the things that I had accomplished were my accomplishments, not God's. So God, in his kindness, humbled me with an injury. See, at 8 a.m. on November 21st, 2017, I got in my car, drove over a bump on a gravel road, lost control of my car, crashed into a ditch, through a telephone pole, and through a fence. Yeah, brutal. When I got out of my car, or when I crumpled out of my car, Ethan, you can show the pictures, I had a broken spine and the beginnings of a humbled heart. So this is me, Thanksgiving Day, <laughs> pumpkin pie right there. That's Isaac. I don't know, where'd he go? Is he in here? Oh, He's not even in here. What the heck? Oh, nice. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, but yeah, that's me in the hospital. You can go to the next one. I had to wear this giant little like turtle shell brace for the next little while. And at this point, I was a freshman at Iowa State, right? And it was November, so it got cold outside. So I had a big old winter coat on and I had to roll around a wheelie backpack. It was brutal because I couldn't carry one. I didn't have the, you know, strength or whatever. But guys, like I said, breaking my spine was actually one of the best things that ever happened to me. I still believe that to this day because it challenged my identity. All of my identity was in all of the, the things that I had done. And spoiler alert, when you break your spine, you're not very good at anything except for just sitting around. So... It challenged my identity because my identity was in what I did. It also marked my life forever. I still have back pain. Those of y'all who ride with us to camp over the summer are going to hear about it because I get back pain on long car rides. It's pretty brutal. But what it is, is it's actually a reminder to me that I'm broken without the Lord. So I actually get to see that as a blessing because God was kind to me. So tonight, we're going to spend some time in Genesis 32. That's where the majority of what we're going to be, where we're going to be tonight. But we're going to launch out of Hebrews 11. We've been doing that for the last few weeks. We're going to do that again. I don't even need you to turn to Hebrews 11. It's just two verses. Actually, it's just a phrase inside of one of those two verses that we're going to unpack tonight. But I want you to go to Genesis 32. I'm going to read what's in Hebrews 11 for us to jump there. Hebrews 11 verses, oh, lost my spot. There we go. 20 through 21. It says, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, and he worshiped leaning on top of his staff. Now, what I want to do tonight is actually dig really deep into Scripture, because the one line we're going to focus on is the bold one there, and he worshiped leaning on top of his staff. Now, we've talked about this before, but the book of Hebrews was written to a Hebrew audience, and all of the Hebrew audience would know who Jacob is, because Jacob was the father of the nation of Israel. So when it says that he worshiped leaning on top of his staff, they knew what, what the significance of that was. They knew that Jacob's faith shaped his identity and marked his life forever. And that's our bottom line tonight, is that faith shapes our identity and it marks our li lives forever. And we're going to look at that in Genesis 32. Now, uh, yes, let me go here. Cool. Cool. Before we get there, sorry, I lost my place in my thing. I skipped the page. We're good. But before we get there, I want to tell you a little bit of backstory about Jacob, about who actually Jacob is, because I think when we understand who Jacob is, it'll help us understand a lot more on why the author in Hebrews put that phrase in there about him. So what we're going to do is a little thing called psychological criticism. It's looking at characters of the Bible and trying to see the motives behind the things that they do. So if you want to know more about that Bible study tool, you can Google it, but that's the little short blurb. We're going to do this because I believe that the Bible shows through story after story that Jacob was a man who constantly wrestled. He was a man who constantly wrestled for approval 
for blessings and for love. And it took a life-altering injury to show him how his faith should shape his identity and mark his life forever. See, from a young age, Jacob wrestled for approval because the Bible tells us that his barely older twin brother was his father's favorite child. Esau, it's his brother's name. Esau was a man's man, and his father loved him for that. He was great at hunting and doing all these things. Jacob's dad liked that. Jacob was more of a homebody. He was more of an indoors guy. But if that wasn't bad enough, back in that time, told you he was his barely older twin brother, back in that time, the oldest son was the one who got all of the wealth and inheritance, so everything was riding on Esau's shoulders, not Jacob. That means is that Jacob wasn't just second place in his father's affection, he was second place in his will as well. Just kind of a hard spot to be. He was wrestling for a blessing that he could never achieve, the blessing of the oldest son. And in that wrestling, Jacob decided to take control. He and his mom decided to trick his brother and his father into giving him the blessing that belonged to his older brother by pretending to be him. When Esau, his brother, found out about this, he was furious. He vowed to kill Jacob as soon as Isaac, their father, had passed away. So hearing about that, Jacob was out of there. He decided, I can't be in my hometown anymore. I got to go somewhere else. So he went to his uncle's house. And there, Jacob wrestled again, but this time he wrestled to be loved. At his uncle's house, he met Rachel and fell in love with her. He then asked Laban if he could marry her. And Laban, in an almost poetic way, tricked Jacob in the same way that Jacob tricked Esau and his father. Laban had Jacob work for him for seven years and promised to give Jacob his daughter at the end of that time, but he gave Rachel's sister to Jacob instead of Rachel. Furious, he'd still wanted to be loved. Jacob went back to Laban, made the same deal, and worked another seven years to be able to marry Rachel. And after 14 years of wrestling to be loved, Jacob was finally able to get a glimpse of that love he was searching for. And after being married to Rachel for a few years, God spoke to Jacob again, told him to return to his home country, and this is where we pick up with him. In the middle of this journey, we pick up with Jacob in probably a lot of wrestling with fear at this point, right? I can't imagine how hard it would be to go back to a, t- to a land where I-, I know that I'm wanted dead, right? That would be really hard. And at this point, a lot of theologians believe that Jacob's probably 97 years old. So, This 97-year-old who's wrestled his entire life for approval, blessings, and love is now going to wrestle with the creator of the universe. Not going to go super well for him, spoiler alert, but what's crucial to see here, and I want to take a little pause. The reason I went back and did all this rewind is because this is where God meets Jacob in his faith. See, last week, Will talked about how our faith moves us and it meets us, right? Right? Sarah's faith met her in her doubts, in her wrestling, in her brokenness over not being able to have a child. Jacob's faith meets him in his wrestling as well, in his brokenness. God meets him through that. And before we move past this, I actually want to pause. Because I was, I was preparing this, and as I was getting ready to talk to y'all, I thought about some of the faces in the room. Because I know y'all. And I know that there's a solid chance that a lot of you guys can probably identify with Jacob's story in one spot or another. A lot of you guys probably wrestle for approval, right? Because your home life, it's not all that it's cracked up to be. And so you're trying to find that approval through other things, and honestly, you just keep coming up short. Or maybe you're wrestling with comparison, never feeling like you're enough. I don't know who your Esau is, but I know that all of us have an Esau in our life someone that we could compare ourselves to until the cows come home and we're never going to feel like we're good enough. Or a lot of you guys might identify with Jacob because you feel alone. It's a real thing. You're looking for love and God keeps closing the door in your face and maybe you're even trying to fix it in some of the wrong places. Some of y'all aren't too far away from 14 years old. Some of you are 14 years old. Jacob wrestled for your entire life to find even a glimpse of love. So I think it's important because I think this is where God meets us. It's in our brokenness. This is where our faith meets us and shapes our identity and marks our lives forever. So the one thing I want to tell you tonight before we get into all that is that faith, it's not always the glamorous raise my hands at a worship song, feel good about myself and all that stuff. A lot of times you actually have to take your hands down, fold them and pray and wrestle with God through some of those hard things that you're walking through. 
I mean, look at Jacob. He was wrestling to fill a void in his life that only God could fill. And in this next section, we're gonna see God meet Jacob in faith. And honestly, it's not in a way that I would have ever expected, but God knows what he's doing. Look with me at Genesis 32. Hopefully you turned there earlier on. I'm gonna read for us. 32 verses 24 through 30. It says, Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he could not defeat him, he struck Jacob's hip socket as they wrestled and dislocated his hip. He then said to Jacob, let me go for it's daybreak. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What's your name? The man asked. Jacob, he replied. He said, your name will no longer be Jacob. It will be Israel because you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he answered, why do you ask my name? And he blessed him there. Jacob then named the place Peniel, for he said, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been spared. Now, <laughs> think about that. When we're talking about things that God uses to shape our, our identities and mark our lives forever, I don't think we're gonna get a more powerful experience than what Jacob got, right? God touched his hip and it broke. But I wanna talk about what's happening in verse 27 because we see something a little interesting there. What's your name? It's God speaking. He said, what's your name? Jacob, he replied. In the middle of the wrestling match, <laughs> right after God broke his hip, he asks him a question that on the surface looks kind of silly, right? Like, why is God asking Jacob about his name? He broke his hip at one touch. He probably knows his name if he's powerful enough to do that. He asks what his name is because of what his name means. He asks because he wants to talk about Jacob's identity. See, Jacob or Jacob in Hebrew means usurper or supplanter. In other words, Jacob's name lines up with how he has lived his entire life, wrestling for control, even if it means gaining it through sketchy means. Guys, God asked Jacob what his name meant because it was a marker of who he was. It was the baggage that he was carrying around. He was living into his name. He was a deceiver. He was wrestling for love. Guys, he was lacking affirmation from his earthly father, so he usurped the blessing of the oldest son to try to get it. Jacob's faith was not what was shaping his identity. His actions were. And God, seeing Jacob's situation, seeing all of this, he knew what it would take for Jacob to be freed from all the baggage that he's been carrying around his whole life. Let's see what God does about it in verse 28. God's speaking again. He said, your name will no longer be Jacob. You see the significance of that? Your name will no longer be Jacob. You will no longer be known as deceiver or usurper because I'm gonna give you a new name. He says, it will be Israel because you've struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Y'all, the faith that Jacob had led him to wrestle with God. And God used that faith to shape his identity. And when I say that, I'm not talking about what happens on the outside. I'm not even talking about Jacob's actions and what he's doing. He's still in the middle of the desert, going back to the land where his brother wants him dead. It doesn't change anything on the outside. All it does is change his inside. But see, the shift in identity revealed to Jacob that the love, approval, and blessings he'd been wrestling to earn his entire life could be found in God alone. God used Jacob's faith to shape his identity. So let's pause again. Let me ask you, what is your identity shaped by? What is your identity shaped by? You letting God define who you are? Or are you wrestling to find your identity in anything but what God says you are? Honestly, this is something we probably know. <laughs> You're in a church building, right? It's, it would be weird if I told you that faith shouldn't shape your identity. But I get it. A lot of times, even as people who really want to follow Jesus, it can be hard to remember that our identity can be found in God. But if your faith is in Jesus... You are no longer the one who dictates your identity. You are who God says you are. That's who you are. 
If your faith is in Jesus, you are who God says you are, and he says that you are a son or daughter of the king of the universe. That should sink in. We talk about it every week because it is so crucially important to your soul and the health of your soul that you remember that on a daily basis. And it's an incredibly important truth. But if we're honest, this week, it comes from a story in the Bible that's incredibly confusing, isn't it? I mean, the question that we're asking, or that you probably are asking, is like, why? (laughs) Why did God have to wrestle with Jacob to shape his identity? Why did it say that God couldn't defeat Jacob? What's up with that? Why didn't God just speak to Jacob from heaven and tell him about his new identity? Why did it have to be a wrestling match, right? Like, what, what's going on? It's because this is what it's all built towards. This whole passage is what we call a Christophany. It's a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus. And this isn't the first time it's happened in the Bible. We'll talk about it last week. And it's not the last, but it is a foreshadowing. Guys, there's another time in the history of humanity, that God came down in human form for the sake of blessing humanity. There's another time where he took on weakness, where it looked like from the outside he couldn't do things, but he really took on this weakness to bless humanity. See, Jesus is the embodiment of God himself. And he came down from heaven to earth to be made weak so that he could conquer once and for all any identities we find ourselves wrestling with outside of him. Jesus is the son of God, the creator of the universe, who lived a perfect life, died a death that you and I deserve, and then rose to life again on the third day to free all of humanity from the broken sinfulness that we live in. In Jesus, we have hope. In Jesus, we have freedom and we have deliverance because our faith should shape our identity. Because when your faith is in Jesus, you are a son and daughter of the king of the universe. So if you haven't let that identity shape you yet, maybe that's your next step. Maybe that's your next step today is just to stop wrestling. Doesn't that sound nice? To stop fighting? To just rest in him? But guys, Jacob walked away from his encounter with the Lord with a lifelong limp. That's why that line in Hebrews 11 is so important, that he leaned on his staff and worshiped. Because that's something that the entire Hebrew audience knew about. They all knew about this encounter that Jacob had with God because Jacob's life was marked forever because of the encounter that he had with God. And what I want you to see from this is that faith in God isn't always sunshine and rainbows. Guys, faithfully following Jesus, I wish it did, but it doesn't give you an escape from pain. It does give pain a purpose, though. Following Jesus doesn't give you an escape from pain. It gives pain a purpose. See, the promise of deliverance we have in Jesus is super real. But oftentimes, we can get eternal deliverance confused with comfort right here and right now. And guys, it's crucial to remember that our salvation, it's not just for this world primarily, but it's for the life to come. Christian or not, we all experience the same brokenness of the world we live in because we still experience sin. And sometimes, like my car accident, God might even allow some painful things to happen to you in order to shape you into the identity that he has set out for you. It doesn't mean that God will break your spine to get you to listen to him but it does mean that he loves you enough to do that if he has to. It wasn't a fun thing to have my spine broken in college, I'll say that, but it was the best thing because it taught me humility in a way that I never would have been able to learn before. Now for Jacob, it was a lifelong limp and a name change that shaped his identity and marked his life forever. And for me, it was a car accident with spine pain, but it doesn't have to be that. I wanna close tonight by telling you the story of Mary Slazer. She's a woman who experienced the brokenness of the world, but when she was just a little bit younger than y'all, she gave her life to Jesus and she decided that her identity was gonna be shaped by her faith and that her life was gonna be marked forever by King Jesus. See, growing up, Mary's home life was defined by brokenness. 
Her family was really poor, and her father was an alcoholic. So at age 11, she went off to a textile mill to try to earn some money for her family. She came back when she was 13, and she listened to a sermon. And in this sermon, she felt convicted of her sin, gave her life to Christ. And after doing that, she felt this profound sense of joy that she couldn't hold in anymore. See, that experience, it was something that shaped her identity. She knew that she was a loved daughter of the king of the universe, and she wanted to share that truth with as many people as possible. So at the age of 28, 15 years after she got saved, she felt a calling to share the good news of Jesus with as many people as possible, so she went to Nigeria. You can throw that picture of her up, Ethan. Throughout her 40 years of ministry, this is Mary Slazer, 40 years of ministry, this is towards the end, her life was marked by hardships and sufferings. God didn't break her hip or her spine or anything like that, but he didn't go easy on her. It was faith that marked her life forever, though. Even though she went through hard things, her life was profoundly marked by the faith she had in the Lord. It was faith that marked her life forever by giving her courage to stand up for the rights of women and children in the area, by advocating for them to be protected from abuse and exploitation, and promoting their education and equal treatment. All those are big words, all those things are great, but what that means, she stood up against child sacrifice. (laughs) She was in a kingdom in Nigeria that was practicing child sacrifice in a lot of different voodoo temples. So she went in, she became a teacher in Nigeria, earned the trust of the people, and started advocating for those children. It was faith that marked her life forever by sustaining her through personal tragedies she experienced. She lost her mother, her siblings, and many of those children that she rescued. And it was faith that marked her life forever by empowering her to stand up in a region where women were overlooked and kind of despised. So Mary Slazer, a woman of God, whose faith shaped her identity and marked her life forever, at the end of a 40-year-long journey in ministry, she was able to look back and see countless lives changed for the glory of Jesus because they found that faith shaped their identity and it marked their lives forever. So guys, the question is, are you tired of wrestling to find your identity in something that never satisfies? Are you ready to stop fighting and let Jesus be the one who shapes your identity? Guys, trusting in Jesus means finding rest and peace that nothing else can offer. It's time to let go and allow the king of the universe to define who you are. And if you have put your faith in Jesus, are you willing to let your life be marked by your faith in Jesus? Are you willing to use your college years, seniors? (laughs) It's the last time I'm talking to you from this stage. Are you willing to use your college years to show people that your life has been marked by your faith in Jesus? Love you guys. Let me pray. God, I'm so thankful for each and every one of these students in this room. Jesus, if we were able to see as clearly as you can see that our faith should shape our identity and mark our lives forever, God, we wouldn't be the same people. So God, give us eyes to see that. Jesus, give us the ability to be able to surrender all these things to you. To just stop wrestling Lord, be our identity. Show us how to mark our lives for for you. God, we love you. We praise you. It's in your name we pray. Amen.